So what you have here is our Connection Broker 6.0, the administrator web interface. Um, so <laughs> that thing makes me nervous, actually. Um, the Connection Broker is a heterogeneous solution. So we can basically broker any kind of VM that comes from a Citrix Zen server, any kind of VMware virtualization layer, um, Hyper-V, pretty much you name it, as well as physical machines, whether they're in Active Directory or not in your Active Directory, and then applications in Zen App. So in the Connection Broker web interface, you define what we call centers. And this is basically the external systems from which you're deriving your resources. Um, so as you see here, we have a vCenter, server center, uh, Zen server, Zen app. Once you define your, Zen or your centers, then they appear in the desktops and the application tabs. So these are all the desktops and all the Zen app applications that I now have and I can assign to my end users. So you're brokering BDI and applications for Zen app? Yep, side by side. Um, now, once your broker knows what all your desktops and applications are, how do you actually get them to your users? Um, what we do is we define policies. So if I come to the users tab and look at policies, I've predefined some policies in here. And what the policies basically say are what desktops and what applications am I going to send to a user who's assigned that policy, and what remote viewer protocols am I going to use, and what USB devices can that person attach to their, their yeah. desktop. So here you see, this is, a, for example, a development policy. And this person has one, one machine that's developed or derived from a Linux pool. And basically, in the resources tab, I can create pools of machines with similar characteristics. So here I created one pool of Linux machines and one pool of Windows machines. Okay. And so this developer could be assigned a Linux or a Windows machine. The policy also gives you options for what to do when the user disconnects from the machine or logs out. Do I want to power it up? Do I just want to suspend it? For VMware machines, you can revert to snapshots, which is kind of nice. You can okay. go back cool. to a known state. So after I get through all my pool assignments, so after desktop pools, I can pick an application pool. So I can have one policy assign both desktops and applications. As I go down, here you'll see all the different remote viewer protocols that we support. We don't, you have some connection brokers that have their own protocol. We basically say, you know, we're not in the protocol business. There's plenty of people doing it. They have great protocols. We just can integrate with them. Okay. So here, you notice for Zen App, we natively launch ICA connections. For Linux, we can do NX no machine connections or our desktop, uh, BNC, HPRGS, and then you know very broad variety of RDP connections, including the Sunray UTTSC. Okay. Um, so lots of different ways that you can get to your virtual machines. The very bottom of the policy, if I keep scrolling down, is the USB device pass through. So I can basically say, is a user allowed to connect all USB devices? Are they not allowed to connect any? or do I just want to connect specific devices? So here I can say, well, this particular policy only lets people connect to mass storage devices. Okay. Uh, put my demo back the way it was. So now we have a policy. Now it's a matter of how does that policy get assigned to a user? <clears throat> That's done through an authentication server. Now, we integrate with Active Directory, which everybody does, but then we also integrate with Novell eDirectory, okay. as well as basically any custom open LDAP system. Okay. <clears throat> So if I go look in here, it's going to take a little while to load because it's trying to find our Active Directory, which is not actually on the network here, so give me a second. But inside this authentication server, <clears throat> once it comes up, you assign policies to users based on their AD attributes. Does so it require you to extend the AD schema? No. Okay. We are, for any of the centers, authentication servers, anything we interact with, we interact in a purely read mode. So if I come down here, oops. Sorry. If you come down here, uh, I'm not connected online, so you can't see. You would see all my AD groups would show up in here, and I could pick whatever group I wanted and say the person who logs in through that group is assigned a role and this policy, and that's how I know what desktops. Roles basically control how much interaction a user can have with the web interface. Roles allow you to create help desk type groups. So if I have someone who's actually just supporting the VMs, they shouldn't be able to set up the connection work, but they need to be able to restart VMs and check on the status of it. If the user logs in, then you can create a role like that. I can show you that actually. Roles. I actually have that here. So this is a help desk role. He has full access to the desktop, but no access to any of these other tabs in here. So now, now that a user has signed a policy, I can show you, if I sign out here, if a user is coming in through, say, an SSL VPN or any kind of web browser, they okay. actually log in through the exact same interface that the ad admin uses. So here I can come in and, oh, oh, I'm not sure what happened there. I apparently hit a bad button. 
uh, this is not my laptop and I don't know what it's doing. Let's just make that go away. So we'll show you the web interface once that stops. We also have a client, Leo Stream Connect client, and what that does is it allows you to repurpose a desktop or a laptop as a client itself. This okay. can run in shell mode, so as soon as the client boots, it logs up okay. this. That'll be your default shell? Mm -hmm. I would get in the, reg the shell registry. Um, so if I log in, now you'll see I logged in as Bill, and this was that development policy that okay. he was assigned. So he has three applications, two desktops. Again, it'll launch the desk or applications in ICA and the desktops using whatever protocol you selected from that drop down menu. Right. Uh, let's see if I can cancel this out. That little thing's not going away. Similarly, if I log in through here, there's my desktop. So I can hit view and it'll launch, for example, an active XRDP session. Okay. Anything else you'd like to see? That's great. Thank you so much.